1v1. <clears throat> 1v1 on Langerskaya. This is time to show some cock. <laughs> playing as Soviets in the north. Guard motor coordination. First Paul playing as Oberkommando West in the south. That's a nice change. I haven't seen Paul playing OKW very much lately. I don't, <laughs> I don't think he likes this faction very much, this patch. But I guess he's trying to uh, make it work despite all the nerfs. Pretty much all of his favorite tactics and strategies have been nerfed this patch, so... He's still gonna... He's still rocking the truck push, though. He's <laughs> still gonna try to push it with the truck, even though I'm not even sure what this is accomplishing. <laughs> Just trying to push those combat engineers out of this green cover a little bit. He's gonna get that model, at least. I think. Nope. Teleport's inside. Sternpire's repositioning back a little bit. Conscripts building here on the fuel. We're gonna see a three conscript opening from time to show some cock and Paul three folks grenadier and he's also not chosen commander yet. He's got fortifications, breakthrough, and Luftwaffe. I'm curious to see what he's gonna do. I think Luftwaffe has been really popular lately, so I'm curious. Curious if he's gonna go that route for Falsham Jaeger. On this map, can be pretty good. Can be pretty okay. Uh, the list currently is extremely long, Tyro. <laughs> it is probably longer than I will ever get to the end of, so... <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty long. You can see it if you click the link under the stream. Okay, Sedolio, geez, calm down. <laughs> I got your Steam message. Conscripts engaging folks grenadiers here on the strategic point. <laughs> That's right, Cap Doctor. <laughs> folks grenadiers have to retreat away right there. Conscripts also retreating. Pretty even engagement. It looks like I don't know who's gonna win this. Folks grenadiers need to drop some models really quickly or they're gonna lose. I think the folks grenadiers lost. Yeah, I think Folks Grenadiers lost. Sternpire is trying to jump in on those. Conscripts also going to lose this engagement, I think. There's a Molotov on both of these. And that is definitely both engagements lost for Paul. So, not really str not really experiencing any success in his engagements to try and retake anything over there on the right. And I wouldn't expect him to succeed taking anything over there against a four Conscript opening anyway. So he gets pushed back into his base. He has got a mechanized regiment at headquarters. Um, probably going for flag half track next. And <laughs> wow, he's been very diligent up here. He's really, really going to town with the ghosting lately. So that's going to block pathing automatically to the fuel. And if squads automatically try and path towards the fuel via the tactical map, for example, they will go around this south route and encounter the folks grenadiers in that building. So kind of interesting. And he doesn't even bother taking control of this sector. Some kind of interesting stuff there from Paul. Grenade! Molotov gets tossed right there. Folks Grenadiers have to retreat to safety. That squad of conscripts will retreat as well. MG-34, heavy machine guns are now available. Heavy fortification now available. Pioneers standing by. Grenadiers back to full strength. Incoming fire! Folk Grenadiers engaging in the building right here. Stern Pios making their way towards the middle. Mm, not a very good engagement for Paul. His decision to go mechanized means he really runs the risk of a lot of bleed on these Sterns. It's very hard to engage with Sterns with mechanized regiment HQ. He's gonna send all of his forces to the engagement here for this house to just make sure he holds this area and his cutoff. All he really cares about is not being the aggressor right now, just trying to keep these conscripts at bay. Which is clearly proving difficult, especially with that early Molotov research. Heavy 
Molotov tossed by those conscripts right there. And there's the AA half track for Paul. It's going to force those two squads to retreat. And he's also gone Luftwaffe. So, called it. I called it. <laughs> Luftwaffe and he will field that MG34 right there. Stern Pios is going to fail though. Still, yeah. <laughs> Still uh, conscripts behind those sandbags, although he did just net vet one. He might maybe consider medic boxes on his sturms. I don't know. That's kind of expensive, but it is nice to be able to engage with full health on your sturm pyos. I feel like I sneeze like once every stream now. Like, <laughs> I don't know what the deal is. Exactly one time every stream I sneeze. I can't. I can't help it. A half track rotating around towards the south right here to engage against these units. MG34 is set up, but with a lot of green cover, those guards are going to be un difficult to unseat. None of these flag bursts are hitting because of the terrain. You can see that it's at the bottom of a hill, trying to shoot up a hill, not working very well. Flag half track takes a bunch of damage, has to pull back to safety. Couldn't get any shots off on those guards. None of these infantry in cover even really take any damage at all. And Paul is forced back into his base. Needs to get some repairs done here on his flag half track. Conscripts or er, Folks Grenadiers chase away some combat engineers there in the north though, getting a little territory under control. Stern Pyos taking damage again. They can't engage at all. They're Paul's, one of Paul's two damage sources now. But not having the ability to heal. It's pretty annoying. MG-34 in green cover over here, engaging those conscripts. Just more sandbag fighting positions everywhere. Flag half-track firing at those conscripts. Molotov, ooh, Molotov on those folks' grenadiers, but they'll get clear of the flames eventually. Running around onto the other side of that, that green cover. Okay, <laughs> Shrek a snipe right there. Folks Grenadiers with Black Half Track support have pushed away one squad, jumping into a fresh spot of green cover. He has no choice but to try and push those guards away with the Black Half Track, which is dangerous, but I mean, he's got to do something. This this hill, though, is a nightmare for that Black Half Track. He just can't even do anything. You can't do any damage, you can't get any suppression. So the combination of just the green cover sandbags and the terrain makes this extremely... Uh, extremely difficult position to assault. MG-34 is going to get pushed away by the Molotov right there, and Paul just cannot take any ground. Honestly, I feel that Paul should be playing so much more defensively. I know Paul loves to attack. He's n He never defends. <laughs> I've never seen Paul defend in my life. He will always attack, no matter his faction, no matter the map. <laughs> He attacks, he does not defend, which is great and everything, but clearly it doesn't work very well in this situation. Okay, W against Soviets spamming sandbags with guards behind them. <laughs> it's proving difficult. And he's not engaging very cost effectively. He hasn't he hasn't lost anything yet, but I mean he's bleeding manpower like crazy and he can't even get one strategic point under control. Falschmjäger off to a terrible start. And they will get away. Barely. I mean... Paul would probably be doing a lot better right now if he would just... defend. <laughs> if he just defended his half of the map. I know Paul hates defending, but it would be so much easier for him to shoot these infantry as they try and cross the road with his flag half-track and machine gun. Which he's lost. <laughs> MG34 is actually in this building now. Guard rifle infantry squads can now be called to fight for the motherland. 
Ooh, that Shrek snipe. That was that two or three? I couldn't tell. I think that was two. That's definitely not a record holder. What's the record on my stream? It's four, right? It's either four or three. There's this, the ghosts interfering with the the retreat path. Look how see how I got value out of that. That was a squad wipe you may not have otherwise gotten because of those ghosts. I like that. Very cool. Squad at full strength. Unit operational. Black half track setting up right here. Trying to suppress those conscripts. He needs to pull that thing back though. If they Ura in for an AT grenade, he's like screwed. <laughs> there he goes. He should win this easily enough. Paul Schmager, two squads against one squad of guards. I guess it's like a Shrek snipe. Grenade is way off target. Black half track set up nicely for the flank right there. This engagement looks like it will be won. Mm, it did no damage because of that, the crater right there. I was nowhere near <laughs> Paul's infantry. <laughs> it was a pretty poorly aimed grenade. So, mystery solved. Folks Grenadiers working the cutoff here in the north. Falschermjäger moving up with Sturm Pios and Folks Grenadiers. Molotov on the Falschermjäger brings them pretty low. Pops smoke immediately. He's gonna get a wipe right here, I think. Kind of a late retreat on those Falschermjäger, but I mean, they'll be okay. Sturm Pios pick up the wipe on those conscripts. And he's attacking ground through his own smoke. To force the retreat from those guards while taking very little damage in return. As Folks Grenadiers working the north are forced to retreat off the cutoff, but he will shut down Soviet income for a little while. more smoke. I'm not sure if he's going to survive this time. AT grenade on the flag half track. Fortunately, the stir or the guards over there are pinned or suppressed. Suppressed. Those sturms have to basically force away that conscript squad somehow. Or that flag half track may go down, assuming they chase. It doesn't look like he intends to chase. He could, though. Surprised he's not. Seven seconds on his next AT grenade. He could have killed that flag half track for sure. Paul does have a blob moving up to try and push away that conscript squad if he has to, but I think he probably could have lost his flag half track right there. I don't know, maybe not. It's vet too, so it sets up really quick. He might have been able to set up and, ki and suppress them while they were still out of range. He was also pretty close to a tier 4 structure, so I don't know. He may have ended up just losing those conscripts for no reason. That would have been close if he had made the attempt. I could understand him wanting to play it safe, though, having already lost a full squad of infantry. Paul doing light harassment of the right side. Sturm Pios making their way right as well. Paul will continue working on the cutoff here. Folks Grenadiers and Fulcher Jaeger. Grenadiers sitting behind green cover over here on the right side. The three guards are probably going to force that retreat eventually. We've got yellow cover. A lot more health. Meanwhile, over here, Fulcher Jaeger. Ooh, catch some guards trying to get behind the flag half track. Fulcher Jaeger should be able to force that retreat, and if he doesn't retreat soon, that could be a dead squad. Conscripts oorahing into close range to try and get AT grenades off. Uh, here they come. One AT grenade connects. Guards, fortunately, already have to retreat. And Paul's going to pull back for repairs. Meanwhile, Folks Grenadiers on the right also had to pull away from those guards. 
One squad of stern pyos is moving to repair the flag half track rather than retreat fully, which is a little dangerous. There's an AT gun right there. I'm not sure if Paul saw that with his falls or not. Doesn't look like it. AT gun doesn't quite have range on that a on that AA half track yet. So stern pyos can just repair it above half. It will survive one shot, which is about to come in. Oh no! There it is. From from behind the fog of war, Paul never saw that. Never saw that AT gun. And that's, that's the danger of engaging with your flag half track on the front line. If you don't know what's in the fog of war and it's at less than half health. If it's at less than half health, there's a pretty good chance it'll just get sniped. So it's good it's good practice to just pull back and fully repair because you, you never know. There's a second squad of Falsham Jaeger from Paul sitting inside of this building to engage the stolen MG34 and some guards and conscripts from the left side. Kind of a lot of stuff outside this building that Paul has to engage. Molotov going in is going to force him out. Vet 2 squad making its way forward to help. Fox Grenadiers standing here in the center. Two squads of Fox Grenadiers south of the MG34. Late retreat on that. Oof. Flare. There's a little bit of vision. Falsham Jaeger should probably use that green cover right there rather than char charging into point blank range. He utilizes falls. Paul seems to utilize them like they're a short range squad, like Stern Pyos, when really they're a medium range squad. They're better, better at medium range, so, I mean, he won that engagement easily. I'm not saying he did misplay that engagement at all. But he just, uh, he just seems to charge into point blank range all the time when he could stop at medium range. They don't do that much more damage at short range than they do at medium range. They seem pretty good. Pretty much, pretty seem pretty much the same. Area secure. Cover the advances. Molotov going into the building. Paul Schirm Jaeger engaging guards here in the south. I don't know if that's an engagement that's being monitored. That could be a wipe right there. Pretty good chance there's a bet to Paul Schirm Jaeger squad on their retreat path of those guards. It looks like Paul is moving to try and wipe that squad. Throws a frangible. They're gonna be fine. He's not. He can't stick around to try and kill that. Ooh, if he had stuck around with the Sturm Pyos, he could have. But they got suppressed by the MG34. He had a lot of dangerous squads in the retreat path of those guards, but they get home via some combination of miracles. Kind of curious to see Paul go with the second squad of Paul Jaeger. If he feels he needs more elite infantry, he could have gotten Obers. I guess he doesn't feel he has the munitions for that, though. Spent all of his munitions on these three Panzer Shreks, and now he's also going Jagd Panzer in preparation for the T-34-85s, which I'm surprised are not here already. 13 command points for time to, so time to show some cock. <laughs> 13 command points. He just hasn't managed to float the manpower yet, so fortunately for Paul, that Jagd Panzer is going to hit the field just a little bit before the T-34s do. And he has three Panzer Shreks with which to support it, as well as two possible Panzerfaust squads. No enemy contact. Field promotion. Keep your eyes on your Yacht Panzer, ready for action. Folks, Grenadiers engaging over here on the right side. Both Falsham Jaeger squads making their way right as well with Yag Panzer support. Flare just reveals all of Paul's infantry making its way right. And there's the there's the uh, T-34s. I don't know if he should go in, though. I don't think he should. Yeah, he doesn't like that. He's going to pull back away from that engagement. Falsham Jaeger will not quite get in range for Panzer Faust. Not quite.
how many flares are over here? <laughs> Not a lot of flares. Frangible grenade on those guards. They have to uh, reposition out of cover. The frangible is almost like a like a way better version of the Molotov. Huge AOE damage over time, and it's consistent damage over time too. It's not crit based, so it's kind of cool actually. I probably shouldn't have stood in his own smoke grenade over there though. <laughs> that definitely didn't help. Both of his false squad, false false Schumacher squads have to retreat with that. A very little health or very few squad members remaining. Stick on the front line with one squad of folks grenadiers and his Yag Panzer. And he's done pretty good damage to that one so far, bringing it down to half. Stern Pyros encounter some conscripts over here, dodge the Molotov easily and force a full retreat. Very nice, taking very little damage in return. We'll probably move to take control of some territory very soon. And Paul has gone tier 2 here in his base, so he's got all three tech structures. He built tier 4 just to protect his fuel, nothing else. Which is pretty interesting. He's gonna throw some wire down up here. Shut down the conscripts that we're trying to uh, break through. He's not going to complete it, just throws down a ghost and moves to take control of the strategic point there. Unit Stern Pios have to retreat right there. Two squads of False from Jaeger and Folks Grenadiers working on the center. The Ag Panzer going right. The T 34 is currently both right. Have not received repairs yet. This one's been repaired partially, but. Not entirely. Flamethrower engaging Folks Grenadiers. Polshmeager taking heavy damage. The Ag Panzer fires at the T-34 from far away. That T-34 fires at the uh, Folks Grenadiers right there. The Ag Panzer gets a couple shots off. Nothing too serious yet. And those T-34s just do not want to go in on that Yag. They don't want to go in hard. Grenade toss on these balls right there. Nice dodge. Guards will retreat once again. That's Vet 3 on this Falsher Meteor Squad. Off to a pretty good start right there. MG34 working the left side. Conscripts moving to take control of the center VP. And there's a heavy mortar on the field now. In addition to the two T-34s, bringing him up to 87 of 100 pop cap compared to Paul's 57 of 100, which just goes to show how much he's bled this game. I mean, them kills and losses are pretty even, but one Falschermager model dying is so much worse than one Conscript model dying. So, that's that's pretty much the critical difference. And Paul just queued up an infantry support gun. Wow. Okay, that's new. I don't know if I've ever seen Paul build that unit. I don't think I've ever seen that. Maybe he thinks it's good, this patch. I don't know. It got a pretty good buff. I, I'm a fan, but... I guess we'll see. On this map, I certainly think it makes sense. I hope it performs well for him. There it is, making its way to the front line. Ulstrom Jaeger just harassing territory a little over here. Stern Pyros push away the machine gun, which was not able to get them suppressed before they closed into short range. Folks Grenadiers and Falsham Jaeger will easily overwhelm this position, I think. Paul's trying to use the Jag Panzer to destroy the green cover. It's gonna take a little while though. Infantry support gun firing as well. Ooh, nice hit. And things are still pretty quiet. Yagpanzer 
Gets another good shot off on those C-34s. Must be close to Vet 1 by now. It's gotten a lot of hits. Pretty close. Getting there. Folks Grenadiers push away the tanks. Push away a little bit of infantry. They're vetting up quite high now over the course of this game. Grenade to try and turn the engagement and push away that uh, mortar. Since they're in green cover, it does half damage. Nothing too serious. And more infantry moving up from the right. Push away Paul's Folks Grenadiers there. And probably also here in the center. So he's pretty much completely retreated. His Fulcrum Jaeger fully healed and ready to re-engage. Probably shouldn't do that without... F Ooh, folks, Grenadier support. I don't know. Maybe if... They might be able to win, get some big engagement wins if they can uh, engage against suppressed squads from the infantry support gun. This thing's off to a pretty good start. It's already almost at one. Since it's Langer Sky and the game's probably going to last for an hour and a half, it's probably going to get a good return on that investment. These squads are going to reinforce and heal on the base. Fallschirm Jaeger moving up to engage on the right. Infantry support gun is firing. Getting some pretty good shots off, man. My infantry support guns never get shots this good. What the hell? There go those guards. T-34 circling right. He's already got 300 more fuel. Because <laughs> it's almost been a 30 minute long game and he's still operating on his first set of T-34s pretty well. Managing VPs quite pretty well, I guess. I mean, he's 100 VPs ahead, but on honestly on this map, 30 minutes into the game, clearly things have only just barely begun. <laughs> God, this map is so ridiculous. Fallschirm Jaeger making their way towards the middle. And just, it's pretty much just Langer Sky. <laughs> it's, there's really nothing, anything special happening. Oh wait, there's a Sturm Tiger production. Okay, apparently, wow. Apparently Paul is getting very experimental this patch. None of his normal strats work anymore, so he's like, all right, I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna go infantry support gun into Sturm Tiger now because that's, I just need to try and figure out if I can make something work. I think his normal strategy would be to go for Panther, but he's going Sturm Tiger instead. On this map, sure, why not? He needs to kill a heavy mortar, he needs to kill an AT gun, and he's gonna be relying on, I guess, just a Jagdpanzer and Panzerschrex to kill the, um, these things. He has a mechanized regiment HQ. We could have could have gone Stuka. Stuka is generally the safer version of the Sturm Tiger. How did those conscripts even get over there? They must have vaulted. <laughs> That's his own fault. He shouldn't have retreated without clearing these ghosts. Clearing one of these sandbag ghosts probably doesn't even take a conscript squad that long, so... I mean, it's not like there's nothing he could do about this. All right, Sturm Tiger's on the field. I'm quite curious to see what Paul's gonna do with this thing, how effective it's gonna be. Wow, look at how big that infantry support gun shot was on this mortar. Wow, are you serious? What is this crazy magic infantry support gun that's like forcing heavy mortars to retreat suddenly? I have never seen an infantry support gun pull that off. Sturm Tiger is going straight for the field gun. <laughs> there it goes. The field gun didn't even bother to reposition, and it's dead. Easy pickup for Paul right there. And he's going to pull back and reload. He should probably try to prioritize the heavy mortars if he can, but the field gun being dead me is, is definitely good. I mean, there's nothing 
nothing wrong with picking up a field gun, and they're certainly expensive. Not as expensive as mortars, but it is expensive to lose a field gun in one shot like that. So, very nice. Actually, it's seven kills, crazy man. <laughs> because it kills the uh, six crew members, and it also destroys the weapon, and I'm pretty sure that counts as seven. I could be wrong about that, but I think it does. I think that's where the seventh one comes from, because I don't think it got any spare models from any other squads. I, I don't know, I could be wrong, but I, that's something I've noticed in the past. I'm pretty sure if you use your Sturm Tiger to like blow up a bunch of barbed wire, it gets a bunch of kills too. Because <laughs> barbed wire counts as kills. <laughs> For some reason. Vet 4 Fallstrom Jaeger moving over here to take control of this strategic point. And the Sturm Tiger has reloaded and is ready to move back in. He's got a lot of juicy targets he could hit with that Sturm Tiger. Barely even matters what he takes out. A heavy mortar, a full squad of guards, even a full squad of conscripts for the MG34, whatever, it doesn't matter, just as long as he doesn't miss. That's all that. As long as he doesn't miss and as long as he fires it as frequently as he can, because it takes a little while to get a full return on that investment. Ooh, needs to separate that clump up a little bit though. Here comes the Sturm Tiger. He's firing at something. I don't know, he can't quite make up his mind. AT grenade does not penetrate. Heavy mortar is bleeding his folks grenadiers a lot. He doesn't seem to want to fire, so he pulls all the way back into his base. The T-34s, by the way, have been incredibly idle during all of this. They haven't even moved. It's purely just an infantry and assault gun game right now. Interestingly enough, he's having trouble dealing with those heavy mortars, and he needs to try and get rid of them. His best option is probably to send the Sturm Tiger up the left and fire it over the hedge. He needs to secure vision somehow, though. Looks like Paul is going to send it left. Maybe he'll just try and fire it through the center. I don't know if he has vision of those conscripts. He's firing. He has vision of something. Here it comes. Good guess. Well placed. He probably just fired it blind. And he takes out that conscript squad. Don't think he had vision of any kind right there, but well placed. And he'll pull back for another reload. Falschermanger set up in cover here in the north. I mean, Paul's definitely going to win <laughs> if, if his opponent doesn't do something about that Sturm Tiger. These tanks have not even moved. They're straight up just sitting there. <laughs> that Sturm Tiger will eventually just chip everything down to dead. Not to mention, Paul is well on his way to King Tiger. And the victory points have honestly barely even moved. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the Soviet player has a 100 victory point lead, but other than that, that's, that's not not that big a deal on Langerskaya. Mine over here on the right side. Infantry support gun firing through the middle. Tanks move up to push away Paul's attempt at taking territory over here. Jagdpanzer goes around the south route to take shots at those T-34s from pretty safe distance. Here comes the Sturm Tiger gonna just kill that AT gun which is not even moving okay another dead AT gun <laughs> should probably not just sit his AT guns in front of a Sturm Tiger like that <laughs> Yag Panzer pulls back to the base for some repairs does take quite a bit of damage from marked vehicle but the T-34s don't feel comfortable chasing it into the base one of them's very nearly destroyed this one probably wouldn't be able to chase it either Yag Panzer's making its way to go get some repairs by the Mechanized Regiment HQ. Playing gets shot down off map. Fallstrom Jaeger standing here north, eventually need to get some territory back under control. All micro in this right now though, Stern Pios are going to repair the Yag Panzer. These three squads making their way towards the center to get uh, some more territory. There's quite a few infantry squads left here though, and I suspect that the heavy mortar is probably just going to bleed his advance quite badly. Especially if he doesn't keep moving. 
And you should really spread that squad out again. <laughs> or that'll happen, okay. Surprise, surprise. Storm Tiger moving to fire on whatever he's, whatever Paul can spot in the center. Just hanging out right here for now. It's already got 20 kills. It's only fired three times, I think. It's taking out two field guns and a conscript squad. Here comes the next shot on the heavy mortar. Oh no, he's gonna get those guards too, I think. Oh, almost. That was pretty good. Destroys the gun entirely and uh, and nails that guard squad partially and apparently the Soviet player is getting frustrated by this and I have to say he has made almost no effort to destroy that Sturm Tiger but his second set of T-34s is on the field now flanking deep left I don't think Paul has any vision of this happening he's gonna destroy the tier 4 structure extremely quickly without any protection over there oh no and the Jagdpanzer is about to expose its rear to the two T-34s on the right Fortunately, they are not moving in right now. That could have been a really bad maneuver for Paul right there. Folks, Grenadier Squad has to retreat with very little health remaining. There's another one here in the base. The infantry support guns up to 16 kills. Not bad. That Folks, Grenadier Squad is going to retreat because his retreat path is compromised. There goes the tier 4 structure, completely un unopposed. I certainly hope that infantry doesn't blob straight towards that Sturm Tiger because that could end in disaster. Another huge hit on those Fallschirmjäger. Here comes the Panzerfaust, damaging that engine. If you can follow up on that with the Jagdpanzer, that would be good. Oh no! T-34s are going in on the Sturm Tiger. Jagdpanzer's trying to get in range to support. There's Mark Vehicle. He, he, if they don't hold still, there's no way he can fire that Sturm Tiger rocket. Pulling all the way back into the base. He has no Panzer Shrek protection right now. He needs to Faust their engines and put damage on them with the Jagdpanzer if possible. Infantry support gun is firing feebly at everything. Is he really going to disengage? Why would he pull out of that engagement? He could have killed that Sturm Tiger so easily without any Raketten War for protection or anything or mines. But he just lets it live. Rocket over the hedge takes out four of six conscripts so no big deal right there. And guards with PTRSs are engaged in the mechanized regiment HQ. Sturm Pio is repairing Sturm Tiger and Folks Grenadiers have fully reinforced need to make their way back to the front line try and deal with these T-34s there's the King Tiger in production for Paul once that hits the field it'll be much easier for him to protect his Sturm Tiger than it was before so I really I really think that time to show some cock had a great opportunity to kill that Sturm Tiger just now and he should have taken advantage advantage of it while he had the chance Here comes the King Tiger upgrading with a top mount machine gun now. MG34 is falling a little bit low. Soviet player actually somewhat managing to set up a triple cap against Paul. Almost. Although he is forced to retreat at the very last second. Nice attempt though. King Tiger making its way out of the base to push these Soviet infantry away with Sturm Tiger support. Paul just drove up and reloaded in front of those in front of those guards and got immediately abandoned. Oh, I don't know if he should go in like this. T-34 is exposed to Jagdpanzer fire. King Tiger just phased through that T-34 anyway. Damaged engine. I think that T-34 is going down. King Tiger rotates a little bit. Yeah, that's a dead T-34 for sure. Bit of an overextension right there, and he didn't fully commit either. If he was gonna go in, he should have gone in hard rather than just 
getting in Faust range and then backpedaling himself to death. King Tiger going in on the uh, heavy mortar right there. Wiping it. Soviet player struggling really badly right now. Wait, is the music bugging out? Do you hear that? There's like two overlapping audio tracks. <laughs> what the fuck? That's so annoying. I hate that. No music for the rest of this game. Sturm Tiger going left to engage against those conscripts. And the Jagdpanzer is pulling back a little bit to continue to support this King Tiger. I think he's going to wait for a third set of T-34s and then go in. <laughs> that was a dead something over there. What was that? Conscript Squad? Yes, Conscript Squad. I see yet another wipe on that Sturm Tiger, which only has five kills right now <laughs> because it got abandoned by one PTRS shot. <laughs> oh no! One PTRS plinked off of our frontal armor abandoned the Sturm Tiger. <laughs> I like the reload animation. Look at those guys. T-34 is going in on the uh, King Tiger over here. Oh my god, it's taking so much damage. I think that King Tiger might go down. Yag Panzer is available to support. No Panzer Shreks anywhere nearby. No Panzer Faust anywhere nearby. That King Tiger is so <laughs> screwed. Here comes a giant T-34 swarm of five tanks. One T-34 goes down, shots, all shots on this kick tiger are bouncing right now, what is this? Okay, there it goes, King Tiger down, but two T-34s are taken out in exchange at least, possibly more if that Jagdpanzer can keep hunting. Sturm Tiger is trying to move to support this engagement as well. Jagdpanzer keeps firing, T-34 is trying to pull back to safety, here's a Panzer Shrek volley, Panzer Shrek and Jagdpanzer going in on the T-34s which are trying to pull back to safety here. There's a Sturm Tiger shot, oh it's off target. It's off target. The T-34s deal heavy damage to these Sturm piles as well. I think one more Panzer Shrek volley might maybe snipe that. No, has just a tiny bit of health remaining. And three of the five T-34s will get home. Oh, I will say that Jagdpanzer's on the hunt. This engagement's not over yet. Oh my god. That T-34 gets picked. That is a vet for Jagdpanzer right now. He keeps taking shots. And, and now I think the engagement's over, for real. The smoke screen's gonna block that machine gun from firing it. I don't know, Paul's gonna re-engage. <laughs> He's gonna re-engage. He gets another big hit on, those t on that T-34. Is he gonna keep going? He's just gonna chase these things to the ends of the earth. He doesn't care what it takes. There's nothing here to support. There's no field gun. There's no AT grenades. Oh wait, yes, one conscript squad is left. There's one squad left. Here comes the AT grenade. It does not penetrate. He's got Panzer Shreks on his flank. That one just got abandoned. <laughs> there it goes. Destroyed. Look at this rate of fire. Oh my god, this Jagdpanzer is on a rampage right now. Will he get all five? Last T-34, <laughs> right in the middle of the Soviet base. He's driving through the base and he kills the last tank. Oh my god. That Jagdpanzer is a hero! <laughs> All T-34 is destroyed. I would say the Soviet player handled that about as poorly as he could have, clearing up all anti-tank weapons off the field with the Sturm Tiger and mortars for that matter. <laughs> This Vet 5 Falschermaker squad can kill everything the Soviet player has left by itself, honestly. <laughs> Did you see how fast they just melted those combat engineers? This is just obviously just desperation at this point. <laughs> we tried to retreat, okay. <laughs> Good luck getting away from that. Falschermaker are gonna instantly melt this conscript squad just as quick. 
<laughs> Even on the retreat, jeez. Paul's wrapping up all territory over here on the left side. He's gonna send his folk grenadiers to either salvage, capture, or do whatever everywhere. And I don't think there's really anything the Soviet player can do to win this. He's calling in a final set of T-34s. But Paul has more than enough to deal with an unsupported pair of tanks. Taking all territory. Here they come. Yes, Paul. Here they come. Yeah, Panzer is pretty well positioned for this. Rotated wrong, but there, there it goes. Starts working on those T-34s, one shot at a time. Oh, don't hit that mine. Oh my god, oh no, his engine's destroyed. No, the Vet-5 Yag Panzer's engine is destroyed. <laughs> what? Oh my god. Jagdpanzer hit that mine and it destroyed the engine of the enemy T-34. Folks Grenadiers jumping in the building. Falschermjäger with the Panzerfaust. Damaged the T-34's engine. And it is up to infantry and a Jagdpanzer, er, and a Sturmtiger to destroy the final T-34. There is a demo charge right there. No! No! Oh, he didn't detonate! I can't believe he didn't detonate that. That was a squad wipe for sure. Sturm Tiger is gonna try and hunt that T-34 down. He's not gonna let that get away. Circling around the right side. Sturm Tiger drives over the demo charge. <laughs> Unseen, fortunately. Folks Grenadiers engaging against Vet 3 guards in the middle should win with infantry support, gun support. Infantry support, gun support. Sturm Tiger will spot the T-34 with its engine damage, trying to turn the gun about slowly. T-34 needs to stay in motion to avoid eating a Sturm Tiger rocket. Combat engineers are not <laughs> Combat engineers are not able to get in range for repairs. That T-34 doesn't have the mobility to reliably dodge this. Here it comes! I don't know where Paul aimed that perfectly! Perfectly! Nicely placed. And that is the end of that T-34. <laughs> Paul shuts it down. Finally, all Soviet fuel reserves are exhausted. He sets up the triple cap, and I would say that that is the end of the game. <laughs> well, we saw some experimental stuff from Paul this game. Hey, let's be honest, I think the infantry support gun paid off. It uh, seemed pretty good. And he certainly did a better job of preserving that by the end of the game than his opponent did of the heavy mortars. So I liked his build. I liked his execution. Great use of the Jagdpanzer as King Tiger went down like it was nothing to those T-34s. But that Jagdpanzer, that was probably the best trade <laughs> I've ever seen. I've never seen so many T-34s go down after disengaging I don't know that I don't even know how to describe this replay but it was certainly fun to watch GG <laughs> Axis wins